Hello again, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us for Monday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show. Up uh, first on the uh, headlines, we had a lot of rain, bucket of rain fell again up along the North Gulf Coast, another system rolling up. Last, these are 24 hour rainfall amounts ending at 3 p.m. Monday afternoon and Montague Island, another 7.8 inches of rain on top of the big amount they had yesterday, while uh, Cordova picked up another 3.2 inches today, and Portage Glacier, 4.63 inches, and Yakutat, uh, kind of just uh, everyday rainfall occurring there, 1.89 inches. And moving on to the hazardous weather graphic, uh, go from rain to snow, and these are winter weather advisories for snow. Mostly blowing snow out here in the west with those gusty winds they've had today. Uh, Indian Mountain gusts uh, up to 50 miles an hour and mostly in the higher elevations, but quite breezy here across the interior. So throw the snow in several inches and that uh, reduces visibilities uh, considerably in the blowing snow. <clears throat> had some moderate to uh, locally heavy snow occurring this afternoon over the uh, portions of the southern upper Yukon Valley areas but uh, much lighter down in toward the Tanana Valley. And there's winter weather advisories out uh, through tomorrow, tonight and tomorrow here for the eastern interior for another uh, anywhere from four to six inches or four to eight inches additional in uh, some areas there. Other areas will see less than that. And this mostly for uh, snow and blowing snow, very light precipitation amounts through here, not nearly as heavy as back to the east. And the high wind warning continues for the Bering Strait Coast and St. Lawrence Island, again through tonight and tomorrow for 60 mile per hour wind gusts. On satellite, you can see uh, another system rolling up, the one yesterday kind of backing westward and then dropping southward here into the main upper level low center that's uh, aloft here that's south of the Alaska Peninsula. Had one band pushing eastward here, bringing some warmer air kind of uh, Snow this afternoon reported the perb loss, but temperatures in the mid to upper 30s, so it melted as it fell there. But winds quite strong. St. George Islands picking up a wind gust or recording a peak wind gust of 70 miles an hour out of the uh, northeast. St. Paul Island peak gust 66 miles an hour out of the northeast. Coming down some this afternoon, mostly in the 35 gust 50 mile an hour range at both locations occurring at mid afternoon today. Otherwise, uh, again, quite breezy conditions, but not quite that windy, although Gamble did report a gust of 56 miles per hour uh, over the last uh, 24 hours, peak wind gusts there, and no attack, 60 mile an hour wind gusts out of the northeast, so quite a broad area of pretty gusty winds out of the northeast here. And you can see the downsloping flow, they're actually clearing it out over the uh, northwest coast, Kivalina, and then out, to sea, out into the Chukchi Sea there. Otherwise, uh, cloudy, some clear skies reported up along the Arctic coast, so temperatures a little below zero today. Wind's not too bad, but 25 gusts, maybe as high as 30, 35 miles an hour out of the east, northeast on the eastern coastline, but lighter inland. And then you get into the snow here, as uh, you can see, this area of moisture, pretty stationary. Kind of you got the flow pulling it this way, and then the flow coming up and then taking a turn to the west-southwest, so it kind of uh, really rips the front or the moisture field apart here. So very light amounts through here with the heavier moisture back to the east. And again, this system rolling up toward Kodiak Island. That brought about uh, eight, nine tenths of an inch to uh, Kodiak State Airport in the last 24 hours. But again, far heavier amounts occurring here along the North Gulf Coast on in toward Prince William Sound. And uh, actually over toward Yakutat and nearly two inches falling on the Haines Highway up there near what I believe is pronounced the Chilcoot, Chilcot River area over the northern panhandle, and then lighter amounts on down to the south uh, with really just uh, clouds over the southern panhandle this afternoon with a rain band just off the coast. On the chart today, here's that low tracking just uh, up toward Kodiak, the next one. The first one kind of came in and then dropped back down and is currently this one, while another portion weakened and kind of is this trough here over the Yukon. And then the moisture coming northward got stuck here along the Arctic boundary. And uh, again, mixed precipitation, some light freezing rain occurring here back over the, from the Cuscombe Valley into the lower and mid Yukon Valley, kind of a narrow band of that. Otherwise light snow with uh, 
really wind more of a factor than precipitation out here with those uh, gusty winds, size uh, some cases 50 miles an hour earlier today along the Yukon Delta coast. And of course, 60 mile an hour winds for St. Lawrence Island. Just some isolated snow showers over the Seward Peninsula. Otherwise, a pretty good uh, little breezy day there. And then the stronger winds up here along the northwest coast clearing it out. That downslope flow coming off the uh, western Brooks Range there in the DeLong Mountains. Uh, you can see clearing it out almost all the way across the Bering Strait there into Russia. High pressure, light winds, lighter winds, central western Arctic coast, a little breezier on the east side there, some flurries and fog. Moderate amounts of snow here over the upper Yukon Valley area, and that diminishes to lighter amounts as you get down toward the eastern or the upper Tandana Valley, 40 mile country and the rain here along the North Gulf Coast. For tonight, that low will pull westward and weaken. And I'll keep it uh, wet and a little breezy, Kodiak Island tonight, but the rainfall amount won't be as heavy as you saw in the last 24 hours. And moderate amounts of rain, rainfall rates diminish here for the North Gulf Coast as this front pulls inland with a mixture of rain or snow uh, into South Central Alaska, the Sitna Manuska Valley, maybe Southern Copper River Basin, and which could be possibly maybe isolated freezing rain and some moderate amounts of rain there over the panhandle but lighter down toward Dixon entrance. Here's the next system developing along that front that's going to be taken off to the northeast. Looks like it'll track into Norton Sound so the uh, stronger wind should have a pretty good gradient here on the south side of that. Looks like that'll keep the strongest winds to the south of the area there uh, but another shot of uh, heavier rain will come up with it. And we had areas of snow for tonight, occasional snow and snow showers, but nothing too heavy back through here. Uh, quite light, any, uh, less than an inch anywhere here. In some areas, you'll see even less than that. And it'll stay dry and windy up here over the northwest coast, actually St. Lawrence Island, right up to the uh, Point Hope Kivalina area. And for the Aleutians tomorrow, kind of the same northerly flow here, chilly enough for Rick, mixed rain and snow mostly here for the western central Aleutians and it should be a little chillier there for Alaska so we'll probably see more snow and where you saw just plain rain today of about uh, six seven tenths worth so that should be a mixed rain and snow pattern there but precipitation will be lighter this low weakening over the Alaska Peninsula Arctic boundary here still should look for areas of snow on Tuesday tomorrow here through the interior, but light amounts, again, heavier amounts here up to the northeast, and then lightening up in the afternoon here across the uh, mid and upper Tanana Valley, and possibly ending toward Northway and Toke and Abesna. And this front here, kind of right along Kodiak Island, much weaker, so periods of rain along the southern coast of the Kenai Peninsula, Barren Islands, in across southern Cook Inlet to uh, Kamishak Bay, Iliamna. Looks pretty wet tomorrow and a little breezy. Light winds, though, for the eastern North Gulf Coast. A much drier day coming up, Prince William Sound, actually. And then this system kicking up to the northeast there brings uh, more rain into the southern panhandle. And that will kind of continue into Wednesday as well. That uh, system moves off and weakens. Another trough here slides on in, keeps it wet over the southern panhandle. Now lighter amounts in the north for a change. And could be a dry day with maybe some clearing along the North Gulf Coast on Wednesday into Cook Inlet, Manuska Sitna Valley, Showers Kodiak, and this uh, boundary here kind of comes back south a little bit into Norton Sound with some snow showers, isolated snow showers, central interior, mostly down toward the Alaska Range and Alley Park. And then this area snow diminishing throughout the day, mostly clear, chilly conditions, light winds, north slope on out to the Arctic coast, snow and rain showers continue over the, pan, or over the southeast bearing to the Aleutians. And for lows tonight, uh, 5 to 15 below, Brooks Range on out to the coast, 30s here, mid to upper in the southern Alaska area, lower 40s, some areas of the panhandle, also from Kodiak to mainly mid to upper 30s for the Aleutians and Bering Sea. Highs for tomorrow. Uh, right around zero for the Brooks Range, as well as the eastern Arctic coast, and maybe 5 to 10 above on the central coast. 20s, Seward Peninsula, lower 30s, St. Lawrence Island. Upper 30s, lower 40s for the Aleutians, and mostly lower 40s here for southern Alaska, south of the Alaska Range, mid to upper 40s for the Panhandle. Lows the following morning, 15 to 20 below up over the northeast interior, followed by highs near zero. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Flying weather, Marshall VFR continues. The Aleutians Bering Sea, IFR here, Cuscombe Bay, on up the River Valley 
to, uh, well, at least the Cusco Mountains, maybe even some of that spilling into the valley. Uh, more widespread IFR continues central, eastern interior here, right up across uh, upper Yukon Valley, southward to the Alaska Range, and also IFR along the western Alaska Range, the Aleutian Range, and the Alaska Peninsula, north Gulf Coast, and the northern Panhandle system producing IFR off the Prince of Wales Island Coast, actually all the way up to probably Sitka. And then for tomorrow afternoon, that all shifts eastward. You got a band IFR right up along and to just to the west of the border, Lynn Canal Glacier Bay, marginal VFR out to the coastline, and uh, less IFR now for the North Gulf Coast. Still hanging on to IFR up here, uh, roughly the Upper Tanaw Valley, uh, 40 mile country into the Upper Yukon, back across the Central Interior to the Nalato Hills. Southwest Mountains IFR, Western Alaska Range improving, still hanging on to some IFR though in areas, but that really beginning to fade away in the late afternoon. And for Wednesday morning, IFR holding here again, Upper Tanaw Valley area, but uh, not quite as much over the Upper Yukon Valley. And then back down to the Southwest here, breaking out the VFR Cook Inlets, the uh, Manuska Valley, as well as the Eastern Copper River Basin, North Gulf Coast, IFR holding here over the eastern panhandle as well as the north. Less IFR along the Alaska Peninsula, no change over the Bering Sea and the Aleutians. North Slope Arctic Coast, uh, Wednesday afternoon looking really good. VFR right down uh, all the way into the Cuscoma Valley and the Yukon, lower Yukon Valley, just marginal VFR here along the southwest coast, isolated over the mountainous terrain, Kodiak, the Aleutian Range, and the Auckland Mountains. And uh, Nunavak Island, a little bit of IFR, otherwise some marginal VFR slowly improving here over the upper Tanaw Valley, 40 mile country, back in toward the Talkeetna's northwest Copper River Basin. Otherwise VFR down to the coast and IFR, that band holding over the eastern panhandle. Passes Anatovic VFR with marginal VFR on the southern entrance. And for Adigan, that band of moisture will probably be a little farther to the north, so I'll go v marginal VFR in the pass with VFR northern entrance on up, and Lake Clark and Merrill improving, starting out IFR, possibly becoming VFR later in the afternoon. Rainy improving, but probably staying marginal throughout the day, and windy IFR becoming marginal VFR. Isabel, IFR becoming VFR, and from Intasta, marginal VFR, probably by late morning becoming VFR there, and Tanita, occasionally marginal, Portage IFR and improving during the day to marginal VFR in the afternoon. And Chilkoot and White IFR with the freezing levels, still some leftover warm air aloft for that big push that came up uh, Sunday and Sunday night here. So 4,000 feet by tomorrow morning over southern Alaska, but down to the surface, colder actually coming down a little bit here, uh, especially in the eastern interior. So that uh, push of warm air really not getting too far inland or to the north. And then four to 8,000 feet, 8,000 feet now down over Dixon Entrance and 2,000 feet out over the Southeast Bering. Icing, a swath here from the Northeast Interior down to the Southwest Coast and then coming back around the Alaska Peninsula, isolated moderate above about 4,000 feet or so or three to 4,000 feet. Uh, heavier icing, especially down south of that system cutting in across Dixon Entrance, uh, nudging some moisture up for some considerable moderate rime above 5,000 feet. Jet stream, showing the jet associated with that, kind of a kink here as that thing rolls in. 120 knots, but now mostly east and south of the panhandle, so that's going to really cut the heavier precipitation off and maybe even take the strongest winds down across the Queen Charlotte's. Big trough back to the west, kind of on the uh, cool side now, so colder air trying to come back down from the south, or from the north to the south and uh, northeasterly 70 knots there just grazing the northwest or western Arctic coast. Stronger winds at uh, 9,000 feet, east-northeast 50-55 knots into the interior of the northern Bering Sea, diminishing as they come down toward the Aleutians. Easterly 20 to 30 across the Gulf into the Kenai Peninsula. Lighter winds for the Panhandle, strongest winds across Dixon Entrance and Queen Charlotte. Same pattern at uh, 3,000 feet here. Uh, 50 knotters down mostly over the Queen Charlotte's, otherwise much of the panhandle pretty light. Southeast 20 for the North Gulf Coast. Strong winds east northeast 50 to 55. And as far as turbulence goes, widespread moderate chop here, Upper Yukon Valley, Brooks Range, on out to the northern Bering in the Chuck Sea Seas. It's kind of hard to explain how important weather is to our job. I mean, it really 
affects everything we do. In 2018, NOAA launches the GOES-S satellite, which takes its place in orbit as GOES-17. Working together with GOES-16, the two new geostationary weather satellites will provide constant watch over the United States and the Western Hemisphere, from the west coast of Africa all the way to New Zealand, helping monitor severe storms, wildfires, and daily weather patterns. Since its launch, NOAA's GO-16 satellite has already demonstrated its critical capability for keeping our nation weather ready. Throughout the active 2017 hurricane season, GO-16 delivered imagery with detail and clarity never achieved before, with four times greater resolution than previous NOAA satellites, and delivered this imagery faster than ever before, helping forecasters predict the path of a storm and where and when it will intensify. These accurate and timely forecasts allowed for emergency managers to prepare for evacuations, map flood areas, and save lives. So the weather matters. Uh, the weather matters before the weather happens, and the weather matters after uh, the event happens because what we're able to do to prepare, uh, allocate resources, uh, provide information to the public through the media uh, beforehand, and what we're able to do afterwards, how uh, and when the waters are going to recede so we know we can get vehicles with life-saving food and shelter equipment uh, down a particular highway. All of that depends on the forecast. In the GOES West position, GOES-17 will be able to provide critical data for the westernmost United States, Alaska, and Hawaii. We're talking about getting data updates in just seconds, so we can quickly spot wildfires and closely monitor the wind direction and their intensity. The crispness of the data coming in at a faster rate will also help with fog forecasts. We can see the moment the strata starts to develop or when it starts to move out. Like GOES-16, GO-17 carries a suite of advanced instruments, including tools for sophisticated earth sensing, lightning detecting, solar imaging, and space weather monitoring. As an equal partner in the sky, GO-17 will expand coverage of the advanced baseline imager technology across the Pacific Ocean, allowing meteorologists and local officials to see severe weather systems developing in real time. So instead of seeing something, say, this large, that as you zoom in, actually gets kind of blurry, you're actually gonna see something that is much more detailed. In its GOES West position, GOES 17 will be able to monitor conditions in the western U.S. like wildfires, coastal fog, and atmospheric rivers when storms from the Pacific dump heavy rain and snow over the western U.S. GOES 17 will have a major impact on fighting wildfires in California. Up-to-the-minute information in crisp detail allows forecasters to spot fires faster than ever before, even before the first 911 calls come in, and to better track and predict the path of large, dynamic, and dangerous fires. It's amazing to see what we can get uh, and at the level of detail and the speed uh, that we can get the information down into the ground that makes our decision-making uh, way more accurate. With a view of the Pacific Ocean, GOES-17 will also provide a critical eye over shipping lanes vital to the U.S. economy, protecting cargo and passenger vessels from dangerous ocean storms. GOES-17 will also provide a high-definition view over Alaska, resulting in better weather forecasts and improved monitoring of sea ice, wildfires, and volcanic ash. The advanced baseline imager on GOES-17 can distinguish between clouds, sea ice, and snow cover, a critical need during Alaska's dark, cloudy winter months. GOES-17's geostationary lightning mapper monitors lightning flashes, including the in-cloud lightning most prevalent in severe storms, helping forecasters determine when a storm is forming, intensifying, and becoming more dangerous. Thanks to GOES-17, emergency managers will be equipped with more accurate weather predictions and faster warnings providing a real impact, saving lives, and protecting infrastructure. Watching over Earth from 22,300 miles above, GOES-S will provide vital data to our weather-ready nation. Hi, I'm JPSS. I'm a high-tech weather satellite that orbits our planet. I do something called a polar orbit. 
I circle the Earth from North Pole to South Pole, over and over, while the Earth spins. While I do that, I get lots of information about what's going on around the globe. I watch storms, clouds, and rain. I take the temperature of the ocean, measure air quality, ozone health, and take pictures of the land and sea. This information is used for all kinds of things. It helps us take care of our coasts and oceans and all the amazing things that live there. It helps us monitor harmful weather events like floods and droughts and measure the health of the environment. Most importantly, it helps us predict weather three to seven days in the future. That means I can be a big help ahead of storms, where future warnings are important. I send information to the National Weather Service. They use the information to create forecasts. The forecasts are shared with people all over the country to help prepare for weather emergencies. So you look to the sky and wave. I'll be flying by. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Today's sea ice analysis, uh, not a lot different from what we had yesterday, although there is uh, growth going on along the coast now from Nunavak Island on up here. As you can see, uh, around Amonic and up there in northeast Norton Sound. And a little bit here, Kotzebue Sound and then the western Arctic coast. And ice edge up here continues to come southward and actually uh, southeastward here, getting more uh, off to the southeast of Wrangell Island actually than it was yesterday. Moving on to the coastal water forecasts uh, tomorrow, uh, gusty winds looks like it'll throw some gales in with that system coming in for uh, Clarence Strait, south 35 knots, 11 foot sea, southwest 30, 15 foot seas on the south coast, diminishing to 25 knots as you head north and swing it around to the east here on the north coast at 20 knots, and then back to the southwest at 20 with 15-foot seas, Lynn Canal, Glacier Bay, and Stevens Passage, uh, north two east winds at 15 knots. Wednesday, east winds at 15, again for Stevens Passage, southeast 15 for Lynn Canal, and southeast 25 for uh, Clarence Strait. Minimum gales here along the south coast, southwest 35 knots, turning south at 25, then east 25, as you go north and the extreme north coast, east 20 with 11 foot seas. Prince William Sound tomorrow, east winds just 15 knots with 3 foot seas and southeast at 15 with 14 foot seas there for the eastern north Gulf Coast. East winds at 20 with 15 foot seas there for the western zone and east 25 small craft advisories for the Barren Islands and Kamishak Bay and Cook Inlet northeast 15 to 20, seas running 2 to 4 feet. Wednesday, north winds 10, north of the Forelands, but 20 knots out on the northeast south side, and that extends right into Kamishak Bay. Small craft advisories continue for the Barren Islands, east 25, 10-foot seas. East-northeast, 20 knots for the north Gulf Coast. Light northeast breeze there for Prince William Sound. Those seas down to 2 feet. And for Bristol Bay, gales tomorrow, northeast, 35 knots, 8-foot seas. North to northwest across the Alaska Peninsula, 30 knots with 10 to 11-foot seas. Uh, it's Castle Cape to Sitkanak, south 25, seas 11 feet, southeast 25 on the east side of Kodiak, Shilikoff Strait, east, gale force east, released 35 knots and seas 8 feet. For Wednesday, much lighter winds here, Kodiak Island, all zones, northeast 15, seas 6 to 11 feet, and then south, or all of the Alaska Peninsula here, northeast at 10, really light wind day coming up there, 7 foot seas, winds down to 20 for Bristol Bay with 4 foot seas, or 3 foot seas. And for the far western Aleutians, north at 20 with 15 foot seas and 25 knots here east of Amchitka Island at, with seas about 17 feet. And that's roughly the same pattern here all the way to uh, Atka Island. And then small craft advisories for the Fox Islands, especially on Alaska Island, 25 to 30 knots out of the northwest. Those drop back down to 15 knots or 15 to 20 knots, now strongest over toward Unamak Island, but only 20 knots. Northwest 20 for Adak and Atka, north 20 
8 Act 2, maybe Kiska, and then 15 knots on Altachimia. Southwest coast, gale force winds tomorrow continue here, 40 knots, or 35 gales, 35 knot gales for Norton Sound, 40 knots St. Lawrence Island down to the north side of Nunavak, south of Nunavak, north 35, north 35 to St. Matthew Island coming down to under gale force of the Pribilofs. And for Wednesday, northeast 30 knots, Norton Sound, St. Lawrence Island, east 25, north of Nunavak Island, much lighter winds here south of Nunavak Island, out of uh, Cuscombe Bay, 15 knots, 20 knotters for the Pribilofs, and northeast 30 for St. Matthew Island. And the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, light easterly breeze at 10 knots, becoming variable to southwest at 10 on the central coast. And same pattern here, east 20 on the west side, and then from uh, Cape Beaufort to Cape Thompson, 30 knots out of the northeast, and then a little stronger to kick it into gale force category here for the, south, the Chuck CC and 11 foot seas. Those come down to 20 knots the following day on Wednesday. Small craft advisories, Cape Thompson to Cape Beaufort, southwest 20 on the western coast and a little brisker. So, uh, small craft advisories to the central coast, southwest 25, and then gradually diminishing to 15 knots toward demarcation point. And for tonight again, uh, winter weather advisories, snow here central northeast interior. Uh, several more inches and you can see quite a few lines here so gusty winds maybe up to 35 40 miles an hour higher gusts mostly back here to the northwest quite windy along the northwest coast of the Bering Strait high wind warning tonight through tomorrow for St. Lawrence Island rain to wind diminishes north Gulf Coast stays wet tomorrow over the southern panhandle and drier over the interior with a weakening boundary and a chance of rain over the southeast coast <laughs> These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.